Okay. Well, hello, everybody, uh, and welcome to another Eventi Live. Uh, I'm your host uh, for this one, and today we're going to spotlight uh, launches. I think launch, uh, the term, can include many things, uh, product launch, uh, new market entry, a new solution introduction. Uh, really, it's a pretty broad, broad uh, array of things. I think ex uh, executing effective launches is uh, in my view, at least, one of the most important contributions a marketing team can make to an organization. Uh, they are also, launches are, one of the most complex, collaborative, and risky endeavors that marketing is actually asked to lead. Um, I think an effective launch requires a marketing organization to draw on many, if not all, of the specific functions and areas of expertise, things like messaging, communications, content, events, social media, sales enablement, programs and uh, promotions, and, and on and on. They're also filled with risk and uncertainty. So products can be delayed. Customer feedback can come back and be not what you expect to hear. Analysts and press inputs uh, can be positive, not always, can be challenging or maybe different event challenges. And just coordination across uh, a company, and the larger the company, obviously, the more coordination required. Um, as well as with partners. But I think at the same time, launches are also one of the most fun and rewarding activities uh, to be involved in as a marketer. Uh, this may depend on your personality uh, and sort of uh, the risk and uncertainty you like, but I think it's a, a really dynamic and, and exciting part of being in marketing. You're front and center. It's a chance to be innovative. It's uh, an opportunity to really lead on behalf of the organization and create momentum, try new things, and on and on. Uh, we do a lot of support uh, for launches and launch-related activities at Eventi Group. Uh, and every time I am involved in a launch project or before I was with, the, with Eventi and running a launch or being part of a launch, I learn something new, I face a new challenge, uh, and, and I think I come away uh, a, a better business person, a better, better marketer. So today... Uh, I've asked uh, my longtime friend, Eventi client and colleague, Helen Dwight, uh, to join me, and she graciously agreed. She is currently the uh, vice president uh, and global head of industry marketing at SAP. Uh, we're going to talk about launch best practices and some lessons and, and learning she's had from many real world situations, both at SAP and before. Uh, you know, and specifically some of the things that maximize the impact and the success of launches uh, in Helen's experience. So as a brief background, uh, Helen is a, a UK native. She started in the area of, of IT, working as a pre-sales consultant uh, for DataPoint, uh, a hardware company that, that ported Oracle to its operating system. She moved to the United States about 25 years ago with Oracle as a product manager for a brand new product and then moved in to marketing after leading marketing for a startup called Zimba uh, and driving product marketing for the acquired product at Informatica, she joined SAP where she has, uh, she also worked for six years in channel and audience marketing roles in Latin America. So she's got a, a really broad experience. Her experience uh, spans pre-sales, product, channel, and audience marketing, as well as sales enablement. And as I said, today, she is running the entire uh, industry marketing organization at SAP, uh, which is doing a, a, a really broad range of things and really doing some interesting stuff. She has a passion for communications in general, uh, love for languages, and she's very athletic and is uh, active in a number of sports. So welcome, Helen, and uh, thank you for joining me. To, to start, uh, uh, can you talk a little bit about your experience with product launch or with launch in general? and maybe some initial thoughts on what you think make launches successful. Well, first of all, thank you very much uh, for having me on your call and uh, thank you very much for the very nice introduction. So really appreciate uh, you having me here and uh, giving us the opportunity to talk uh, about something that's near and dear to my heart, launches. As you said, it's something that um, in marketing we do all the time. Sometimes people band around the notion of a launch quite flippantly. Um, but I think it's always good to make the distinction between what I call a, a launch um, and something that is more of a, a promotional effort. Um, you know, I think for, for me, there's kind of a sliding scale of complexity for, for each of those things. With, with a launch, 
um, what I consider a launch being kind of up there, as you've said. Um, for me, a, a launch is, is something, an activity that's normally of real big strategic importance for the company. Um, it involves a lot of people um, with very many disciplines across the company. And I think the tricky thing is that all of that needs to be orchestrated um, so that that in itself, I think, can be very complex and, and stressful process. Um, and as you said, I've been involved in um, many major launches where we've brought um, where I brought a product to market, a brand new product to market, um, where we were competitively differentiated, where we've surprised the, the incumbent vendor. Um, I've also, as I mentioned, as you mentioned, you know, brought a product to market that started out someplace else but was adopted by a new company. And I've also been involved in bringing um, to light kind of visions of the future. Certainly, um, you know, 2018, we started out with this vision of the intelligent enterprise at, at SAP, and it's something that we've now brought to fruition um, and, and, and are continuing to bring to fruition and, and, and evolving, but we've really been consistent with uh, with starting with that and, and continuing to evolve it. But I think, you know, you asked uh, what, what, what I think makes them successful. I think um, for me, it's having the right team of people around you um, with with a very so people and a very well timed plan. Timing is of essence. I think we always talk about the four P's of marketing, but um, you know product, price, plan, promotion. They, they really do hold true in this case. Um, and the orchestration. And and I think the other thing that I think is critical, really, um, if you are certainly if you're trying to bring a new product out to market, is something that's differentiated. With market endorsement, I think you you know it's a combination of those things, but um, you know that differentiated offer with your market endorsement and relevance is is critical because that's what's going to really make it uh, take off. Well, that's 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 great. Um, really good thoughts. I want to dive in a little deeper on a few of those. You and I have talked mm -hmm. about it, some sort of related questions. I, I know. Uh, just having worked with you at SAP for all these years and being involved in different sort of launch-related activities, SAP is a, uh, a really interesting sort of case study. They're a fascinating company with all these different groups and, uh, frankly, groups that I didn't, uh, you know, know existed and would come out in, of the woodwork in various launch activities. And I thought uh, throughout, you were always very effective at sort of navigating and figuring out how to piece them, all, piece them all together and make these groups work together to sort of, you know, have it all, as you say, sort of orchestrate together. Maybe to start out with, given your sort of range experience of experiences, can you talk about some of the sort of high level learnings that you've had about launch and about what makes launch successful over the course of your career? Uh, yeah, there's probably a few things that, that come to mind. Um, I think you know, first and foremost, never uh, underestimate the effort that it takes to do one of these things. Um, it's, uh, you know, as I said, depending on the the, the, the sliding scale and the complexity, um, it takes a lot of effort. Um, you know, it's not dissimilar to putting on an event, which, as everybody knows, you know, the event takes one day, but you may have had six months lead time to, to get to that point. Um, the other thing I would say is never assume. I can't tell you how many times um, people have said, you know, I think or I expect or I assume or what have you. And my, my response back is always, do you know? <laughs> you've got to you've got to know and not assume because uh, that's where things fall through the the, the cracks. Um, and I think the other thing I would say, you know, you when you're doing a launch, you're you're making a big fanfare. You're putting uh, something out in market for a reason. And and I think you have one chance to be remarkable. You can't just kind of do a, a half-hearted effort and then expect to do another try later on um i think you've really got to 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 set in my opinion set the tone set the bar high um and be differentiated and drive that that wow factor i think it's always going to be hard to do that but that's essentially why you'll stand out in in all of the noise i mean we've done i remember one of the launches we did we actually did the launch in the home city of the uh, the 
it was actually business objects at the time, did the launch in Paris, you know, so wanted to be right in their faces uh, to do this launch and to make a big deal out of it. Um, and also to highlight all of the, the, the references that we had and all of the compelling value points. And that for us was really at the time very compelling because, you know, it, it was the incumbent the incumbent vendor. Um, and then the other thing is, I, I, I would say, is really, I mentioned earlier the team, but really understanding the skills, the relative skill set of the individuals that are around you, because you're going to be working under a lot of pressure. You've got to have collaboration. It's important to have constant communication, be thinking of each other and, and have the right skills for the for the individuals that that are that are involved, um, and then the other thing, the the last thing that I'd leave you with in terms of the learning is there is there's very um, specific sequence of activities that you should follow when you're rolling something out. It's not dissimilar to uh, I remember several years ago I had shoulder surgery and when I had went through rehab. I found out that there are something like 17 muscles in your shoulder that you have to reactivate in a certain sequence. And it's no different to, to a solution launch or a product launch. You know, you're starting with a product. You've then got to enable, um, the, the developers know about it, but then you've got to enable the pre-sales people that need to be uh, understanding the product so they can do demos. You've then got to train the other internal it, constituents like your salespeople, but you've also got to bring on board beta customers at, at that point or customers that are going to do that endorsement before you then get to a point where you're even talking externally um, and maybe doing testing with analysts and, and before you then actually go out to the press and before you actually reach the customer. So there's a very kind of specific sequence that I think you need to follow and you can't really skip any of the phases or if you do, then you, you, know, you have to suffer the consequences. So that's a great list. So, so first off, just wanted to add um, Helen and I are to the audience here. Helen, Helen and I are going to be talking, uh, but feel free to to submit a question at any point um, if if you want us to dig deeper on any of these topics. Um, I love your list, Helen. That's great, and I love the sequencing point. I know that in the launches that I've been part of, in one way or another, um, where a, a company does a good job of uh, having all the different groups understand what the big plan is, what their role is, and um, you know, getting each group involved at the right time makes it so much easier to sort of move the ball forward. It's, it's a, I've been in the opposite situation, unfortunately, where you're trying to sort of engage with the, maybe the, the sales enablement team way too early in the process, and it's sort of like pushing a string. It's, there's a lot of confusion, and it, it really uh, causes some challenges. Do you, so just a general related question, um, is there a, and I get asked this a lot, and I never have a perfect answer, but wonder if you, what you think about how, what is the typical, how far in advance um, do you typically, do, would you, ideally, would you want to start working on a launch? Or maybe a separate way to say it is, is there some sort of triggering event, if you know a launch is coming up, that would say, that would sort of, uh, set off a, an alarm in your head that said, okay, I got to get started working on the launch now. Well, I mean, I think it's, sometimes you don't have that. Sometimes you get told, you know, we, we've got to do a launch, right? Um, and then when that happens, you've got to figure out, okay, what do I, what do I need to do? What do I really need to do? Ideally need to do. And then, you know, if it's a short, shortened time frame kind of figure out the absolute, the, the things that you might be able to get away with, but the things you absolutely need to, need to focus on. Um, I think the, um, you know, that, that element of it is, is important. And I think um, kind of really understanding what it is you're trying to launch um, as well. And I'm sorry, I'm probably gone off, gone off, off your original question, <laughs> but um, I thought it was, you know, it's important to, from a timing perspective, you know, you're either going to be told you've got to do a launch at, at X time, or if you have the opportunity, um, you would ideally look for a, a suitable venue to do that, do that launch. So say, for example, 
um, if there's a specific external event uh, around sustainability and you have a product that totally fits that that audience, the audience that's likely to be going there, or uh, there's there's some relevance there, then that would be the ideal vehicle to to choose to do your launch. So you know sometimes you're going to be told that you need to do a launch. Other yep. times you may have that opportunity. But I'd say in terms of planning, you know it's if a lot depends. On, if you've got your product and you've got your references, it's um, or your endorsement is a lot quicker than, you know, if you're in a very early stage and you're having to think about, well, I want to launch this product. It's just coming out of um, development. We're going to kind of getting customer, early customer uh, endorsement. Uh, you might want to leave it a little bit. But I'd say, you know, it's, it, I've, I've worked on launches anywhere from, uh, you know, a month, six weeks out to, you know, six months out depending on on the the scale all right let's go to the the second question we talked about is sort of how do you approach a launch what do you do first and sort of how do you go through those those steps that you're getting into it yeah i mean i think um when you the, the the first thing for me is like what is it what is it we're launching if it's a if it's a product you know i kind of really need to understand what does it do um and why should i care you know going back to that what what's somebody using now? If you're going to launch something, why should why would they care about using this new solution? And why is it better than what they're currently using? And more importantly, why would they buy it from you? And why would they buy it now? So it's um, those are the things I think you really need to focus on because that's what's going to give you your hook for um, telling your story in the market and being relevant and being compelling. Um, you know, there's no point in announcing a Me Too. You've got to have a different spin on it uh, if you want to get that traction. I mean, sure, you can just uh, announce something or launch something, but normally you want to have some you want to have some drive behind that. You want to have some call to action. You want to have people respond, especially if it's a brand new product. You want to use that launch to kickstart your kind of early um, your your early sales. And I think with that, you you can really, really launch um, product. Then you've got to have, I spoke about the endorsement. You really need to have some of that third-party endorsement because that's really what's going to validate why you're saying it's the best thing since sliced bread or why this product is absolutely essential in the market right now. Um, and I think that also then helps you define what's the news because <clears throat> remember, excuse me, I have some water here. But uh, when you when you look at um, doing that a launch, especially if you want to to drive press releases, etc., there needs to be some news angle, and that's typically going to be through the the endorsement or the references you have some really interesting story or angle. I remember. One of our early analytics customers happened to be uh, counting the number of bear attacks that were happening in British Columbia. Now, that was an interesting story and got picked up because it was very different than the regular uh, people are using it to track their sales and, and marketing activity. Right. So you've got to think of have the right uh, proof points, data points, references and, and find that interesting story that then uh, reinforces why you're bringing this thing to market and why it's so critical and why people should pay attention to you now. That's awesome. Um, so uh, Asim Ahmed just asked us a question about goal setting, asking about how many goals do you typically aim for. Uh, Asim, I'm going to hold on that because that's one of our questions a little later. Um, and I also, um, we're going to talk a little bit more about customers and customer references, but Maybe uh, jumping right in, because I think this is a, a challenge just beyond. So so you've approached it. What are the things you worry about you know, as, you, <laughs> as you consider the biggest risks? And, and as we said at the beginning, all sorts of things that can go wrong. And something always does go wrong. So it does go wrong. So, uh, you know, what do you what are sort of the top of mind things you're watching for? You worry about and how do you how do you address mm. it? Yeah, this is a really tricky one because, you know, they always say the best laid plans, you can have a plan B, plan A, plan B, um, but sometimes you, you can't 
necessarily control what's going to happen with the elements and, and, and things like that. Um, I think it does vary from launch to launch, um, you know, depending on how major the launch is as well, how critical that is. I mean, all launches are going to be critical to your company, but some may be more so than others and, and will involve various different people. Um, I think for me, um, you know, the, the, the coordination and the communication within the team um, has to be, you know, is, is really important because if you don't have that, um, you're not going to have a launch. So, you know, first and foremost, for me, the biggest risk is you, you've got to have people on board and aligned. And one of the things that I've consistently done, um, whether it was a vision, whether it was a product, was to start off with a core set of people um, at the right, the core set of people that need to know and having constant communication and, and reinforcing the timelines, why are we doing it, different roles, responsibilities, and, and kind of uh, deadlines and not making that a you know rigorous process, but really trying to make sure that the core set of people that are on board um, are talking and need to know what's happened. And then over a period of time, that core set of people expands to to include others that at the right point in time need to be informed and aware to get this thing out to market. So that could be, you, you know, you start with a core team of um, the, the product group and then you gradually expand that to the people that are going to be enabling people internally and then expand that to the people that are going to be communicating or testing that message. So that's, I mean, the, the risk there is you, you've got to have that, that communication. Um, some of the other biggest risks, I think, are that your uh, for your launch is that either your key spokesperson or customer is, you know, maybe late or they can't make it. And certainly in this era that your Internet's going to go down. <laughs> you know, one of the things that we were talking about before we ran this call was, you know, what's the plan B and do I have another system that I can use uh, if it goes down? So um, I think the risk is, you know, communication your spokespeople and um, and your your uh, kind of endorsement, your customer endorsement. If you don't have those, if you don't have your product, you don't have your endorsement and you can't do that communication, it's, it's, yeah, it's not going to work. But make sure you have plan A and plan B and maybe a plan C. You know, you've got, you kind of got to assume you've got to go through all the scenarios and figure out what could go wrong, possibly go wrong. And I've had several things that have possibly gone wrong. I mean, I remember doing a, a, a launch of a product, brand new product in 2000, that was a uh, an application that you could use over voice and, and wireless. And we had to do a voice demo and it was early stages of voice. So it didn't really recognize the English accent very well. So I had to rehearse, rehearse, rehearse how to say some of these things with a more American accent. And literally just before uh, I was due to go on stage, the phone lines went down. In, in the hotel we were doing this launch for. So that was literally a, <laughs> a pray that it's going to work. When I pick up this receiver, I hope that I'm gonna get a dial tone. And thankfully I'd actually called the hotel reception ahead of time and obviously in a little bit of a panic and said, I need this line open. You need to make sure this line stays open. They're like, we can't guarantee that. But you know, we, there was a line and I'm sure that you could have probably heard my heart beating through the, the microphone when we, when we did the demo. No, I agree. If, if anything with IT related uh, has a problem, uh, it, it has the potential for a problem, it happens in the worst possible extent. Yeah. The one thing I don't want to lose here is on the, the customer side, you, know, mm -hmm. you, got, you had me working with you quite a bit on customer references, which are a big part of any launch. Um, you know, with a lot of launches, it's very forward looking and new stuff. Have you, so I love your plan. I really like the idea of a plan B, C and D, and that comes into play a lot with customers. How, you know, any advice on how to deal with uh, you can't get the customer references that you wanted that, that you wanted to get or somebody backs out? I know with, a, again, with, in your SAP experience, uh, a lot of solutions have long term implementations. And in March, a customer might be super excited about it and all ready to be a, a, a reference. Then they might run into a hiccup 
which doesn't necessarily the implementation st could still be successful, but it slows down for a while, and all of a sudden that reference is gone. So, how do you do you delay the launch without references uh, if you don't have the right one? Do you try to have? I guess you try to have four or five, or can you go? You know, can you do a launch with a customer that's that is talking more about the future or an analyst focused uh, validation? Any thoughts there? Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I've so I think if if it's if it's a more forward looking like visionary, then then you're obviously not going to have somebody that can talk to that product working because it's it's there's a future state that we're taking you towards or we're driving you towards. And that, you know, certainly that was a good example um, early days with the intelligent enterprise where we um, was when I was working with with some customers that were willing to talk about why they wanted to work with SAP to move forward in this direction because they saw value in the the ability to integrate the data and the processes and um, be able to operate more effectively, more efficiently and, and put themselves in a better position to be more agile, et cetera, going forward. But that was important to, in that situation, from, from a customer perspective to they weren't reference reference for a product, they're reference for a vision, but then you fill out that vision as you onboard more of those customers. But I think, you know, for me, when you're looking to, uh, to get that endorsement, I think one of the things that you can do and should do, especially if it's an early stage product, is get as many um, customers working with you on evaluating um, and testing that solution from the outset. Because if, if you have that group of, of, of customers, then one, you're going to benefit from the input and the feedback they give you. But two, you're going to give yourself a much broader range of, of, of customers to work with. And most, most customers I've worked with have, you know, are, are very willing to, to provide that kind of endorsement as long as your product is doing what you said it's going to do and as long as... Um, you know, it's helping them um, to, to meet their objectives too. So I think number one is having a, a group of customers and number two is spending the time with those customers and, and really understanding what they're trying to do and really helping them get what they need to do in your product. You can't, what you can't do is just put something out there in market and then expect to have you know, where are my customers? Because you haven't gone to that effort of working with them from the outset. And as we all know, good good products really are the product of actually having some great uh, input from the people that need them and the people that are going to use them. Good. No, I think that, that, that those are a lot of good points. Okay. I want to get to metrics. Before we do that, any mm -hmm. quickly, anything else that you prioritize for, for, I mean, we talked about what's most important, but if you had to focus in on a couple of things um, that you would do or really spend your, your energy on, in addition to the endorsement, which we've been talking about in the customers, are there any other things that you really put up there that are, that are critical uh, to ensuring success? Yeah. I mean, it's your message. I mean, you've got to have somebody that's obviously going to, to, be, to endorse it, but I think it's really understanding is, is what I'm stay, saying differentiated? Is what I'm saying simple <laughs> that you're not having to remember three million adjectives in order to get your appropriate messaging statements so yeah. is it differentiated is it, is it relevant um and and can you articulate that message in a very clear simple way great okay let's let's talk a little bit about metrics um mm. said a, a, a seam and again a seam ahmed was interested in uh you know, how many goals do you typically aim for? You know, what do those goals look like? Um, maybe some thoughts on metrics and, you know, how do you set objectives uh, as you're getting started with planning for a launch? Yeah, so I mean, it's a really good question and I'm glad somebody brought it up because I am um, a firm believer. I don't like doing stuff unless I know whether what, it, what I've been doing has been successful or, you know, did I hit the mark. So I think there are a number of things that um, I would uh, kind of rec recommend or some of the things that we focus on. Um, obviously, one as a launch, if it's if your intent is to um, 
drive broad awareness, then one of the things that you're going to focus on is reach. Um, you know, how many people uh, or potential people are going to be reading this uh, article or whether it's a press release or, um, the, you know, the number of potential views that you're likely to get. Uh, where are you putting, how is this, you know, press release getting picked up and you, are you really getting the broad scope of, of uh, people in the market, the audience that you're trying to attract? You know, if, if you're if it's a very technical product, are you, are you reaching the CIOs or if it's something more geared towards finance, are you reaching those CFOs? So you're reaching the right audience and, and reach. Um, the other thing we tend to um, measure on is engagement. So once you've done that announcement, we all use social media now. Um, it's, it's, did you get that engagement? Did you get people sharing that information, not just liking it? But, but maybe sharing and, and providing comments. So that's also something that um, I measure or track whenever I do a launch. Um, is launch, especially if it's like a, a new product, I would say the number of reviews. You know, so what was the response from um, the, the, the publications, trade press, people that you, that you care about, the maybe it's an industry specific publication and you've launched uh, an industry specific solution what is the uptake from that because that's obviously going to help your cause um, in evangelizing your solution further um, and then I would also say you know very often launch is about awareness but I mentioned earlier about how it can kick start um, demand gen efforts um, the other thing that you might uh, think about is did you did you get any leads um, or, or opportunities from that? And I think that's something you need to make sure that you incorporate into the plan because what you don't want to do is lose the opportunity. You've got this momentum and you've got um, a lot of uh, great information in the market. You may have reached your target audience, but you may want to you know harness that and capture that um, that that um, trajectory and and that. Um, momentum that you've that you've just created so i don't know if that's helped or answered the the question no absolutely um we have, we got a um, a follow-on question from a scene uh again which i think was was less about um less about metrics and more and we probably should have talked about it this at the beginning i think we sort of built it in but more about customer research and defining uh, the users, so, so less about metrics, more about goals or objectives or, or target for a launch. Um, any thoughts or, or experiences you've had in doing that and what, how that fits in and, and uh, where that gets uh, gets applied into an overall launch plan? So, so sorry, for, sorry for the, the, the noise of the interruption, <laughs> um, probably a cold caller. So the, the question was really more of not, not just the metrics that you set, but... Right. But, like the, the target the target market defining the user defining the, the market the segmentation yeah. yeah i mean that i think is obviously going to come down to um the product you know if it's a product launch you would have hopefully done your your strategy around that product and tried to identify the segment that it's best suited for and the audience that is most likely to pick that solution up and I would be very much focused and targeted on that that um, that audience first and foremost. Obviously, you know you can go broader, but make sure that you've covered your bases on that um, specific audience first. You know whether it's a CFO, CIO, CM, CMO, CHRO, uh, whoever that happens to be, and also look at you know is this. Um, you know, cloud solution, is it particular, is it going to be addressing a particular problem set? It could be a very specific issue that you have um, that meets certain regulatory requirements in Brazil, for example, um, in which case you might want to do your launch in Brazil and not North America. So I think you've really got to try and, and, and look at who is this for and pick your uh, pick your environment, pick your location, pick your timing based on what it is you're trying to do why did you build this product in the in the first place or why did why do you want to do this announcement in the first place no oh, that's great 
Okay, I want to get, we're getting to the end. Um, I wanted to, maybe one other uh, opportunity, Helen, if there's anything that we haven't talked about or anything specific about your time and your current role uh, or other roles that you would share about, about launch in general, um, and maybe anything that we haven't covered in our question that you wanted to bring up or final thoughts. Ah, final thoughts. Um, I mean, I think that the key for me is, uh, you know, never underestimate the time it takes and, and don't, uh, don't assume that the market's not going to um, spot kind of <laughs> areas where you where you might be be weaker I think it's really important in this day and age that we that we show up with um, the solutions that um, are going to do what we say they're going to do um, and that we that you plan accordingly that you give yourself enough lead time I know we live in the real world and sometimes you need to work quickly um, but try to not cut the things that are going to make most value or add most value for your uh, launch, which is the uh, differentiated messaging. Why me? Why now? Why buy? Um, the, the endorsements that you've got, what kind of story, what kind of interesting story do these people have? How are they using your solution in interesting and different ways? And I think if you have those things and you have the right set of people around you, you're going to you're going to have a great um, a great solution launch. But it's, it's getting the basics, um, getting the basics right, um, your endorsement and your message um, and then figuring out, obviously, how can you be smart and creative in, in taking that to market? You can, as I mentioned, you can do some very creative things like do the launch in, in the location where the, the, the competitor is going to be, or you can um, find out a novel way of, of bringing something up. I know when we an, an, uh, launched uh, Power Center RT, it just happened to be when the whole market was talking about real time. Uh, you know, so you know, trying to find those hooks to make your solution, your message um, highly relevant to your target audience is, is key. Okay. Oh, great. I'm more than happy to, uh, if anybody's got any other questions or wants to, to follow up afterwards, more than happy to, to do so. You can reach me on LinkedIn. Um, and we also have, um, I think you, you've probably got my details there as well. Yeah, and we can, you can always just reply uh, and ask the questions here on Twitter, on LinkedIn, directly to the Eventy Live. You know, we haven't, we, we, just, we just sort of started to touch on the whole creativity Piece. And I think that's a whole nother fun topic is, you know, how do you do a launch event? You know, some of the really innovative things that are going on. Um, you know, you've, you, you've worked in your past for a company that is famous uh, for doing some really aggressive uh, mm -hmm. stuff in response to other companies' uh, launches. So we, yeah. that's another topic. And I think there's a lot of, especially with the technology and some of the tools with video and, um, things that there's some really especially with digital now so i mean everything's yeah. you know driving more digitally and there's a lot of things that you can do to tap in to to what people need and uh using the the, the technology to your advantage exactly well thanks everybody for joining and thank you helena this will always, always my pleasure fun. i can't believe the time's yeah. gone so quickly <laughs> I know. and i think with that uh, I think we've, we've, we would welcome ongoing questions, but otherwise I think I'm going to go ahead and, and close the chat. So thanks for spending some time with us this morning. Thank you. Appreciate it.